In our previous video, we took some photo capture logic from our main fragment, and we moved it up into a brand new superclass called Diary Fragment. In this video, we're going to use that common logic to add a photo to an event in our event fragment. Remember that an event is something that can happen to a specimen of a plant that we've planted. We can water it, we can fertilize it, we can prune it, we can get fruit from it. Each of these are events that would happen over the course of a plant's lifetime. And we might want to photograph those events along the way. So doing this is going to be quite straightforward because we've already done a lot of this logic. So first we'll start with our screen and you notice that we have a button for save. One little tricky thing I want to do is the save button currently occupies the entire width of the screen and I want to change this into a button bar where I can add multiple buttons to it. The easiest way to do this is with the horizontal linear layout. It will be a little bit tricky just because I'm in a constraint layout. So I'm going to need to kind of drop this guy here. And I will constrain him right below description. And then pull it all the way left to right like so. And inevitably I'm going to need to run back behind in text view and edit some of this. But nonetheless, uh, layout width, let's go ahead and make this one match constraint so it goes all the way left to right. Layout height, we're going to make this one wrap content. And you see it kind of goes into a funny place there. So additionally, I want to take this button and I want to add it to the linear layout. So this is the point where I start to think, you know what, maybe it's easier if I just go behind the covers. One major reason is I want the linear layout to get the constraints that the button used to have because the button's going to go inside of the linear layout. So that's easier to do in the background here. I can simply take the uh, app layout constraint that we see here, cut that out of the button, and let's simply drop that right here into the linear layout. Whoops. Drop it into the linear layout. We have to be a little careful, careful make sure we don't overwrite too much. There we go, like so. Now you notice that the linear layout has an open and close tag, and that's because it's essentially a container. It can contain multiple other components. So I'm going to take this image button, and I'm simply going to cut it, and I will paste it within our linear layout, and save. Now layout width, let's see, it doesn't like that. We will likely change this to, uh, let's change this one to wrap content as well, like so, save. Let's go back to design view, see if this makes a little bit of sense. And the funny thing is it, it kind of does. Uh, if I zoom up, you can see we essentially have the button in the same place where it used to be. Although now I'm thinking, let's change the uh, layout width to match parent. Ah, there we go. So believe it or not, all that work, we ended up with what we started with, with one difference. And that is we put the button save in the linear layout. And then also the linear layout is properly constrained and everything else is properly constrained to it. So I want to add one more button here, and this is really what I'm getting to. I want to add one more button, and that is the button for taking the photo. So let's take this button, and I can drop it into the linear layout, or I can maybe do it over here. It might be easier. Just drop it like so. And for the image, we can use an image that we've already created in our project. Because on another screen, we had a take photo button. So we already have this image. I simply select and choose OK. Now we see it looks like the save button is still taking up a lot of the room here. Uh, so for our new button, let's change this also to match parent. OK, let's do one other thing. Let's say layout weight 1 for our image button and go over to our save. And let's give this a layout weight of 1 as well. And layout weight one and one, what that means, you can see a little easier if I zoom up. What that means is sum together all of the layout weights that are within this linear layout. Make that the denominator. Now take the layout weight of each individual component and make that the numerator. So both of these buttons have a layout weight of one, which means the denominator is two. One and one is two. Each of them has a numerator of one. In other words, they're both sh sharing half the screen size here, half the length of, or the width rather, of this component. And if I add another button, which I will do shortly, then it will be one out of three. In other words, each one will have a numerator of one and the sum of all the weights will be the denominator, meaning they will all be equally spaced apart. Okay, so we take the button. I don't like leaving it at the default ID because image button one, image button two, image button three, you'll quickly forget which is which. Let's change this to btn take event photo, just like so, and save. And with that, we can go back to the event fragment. Now on the event fragment, 
on the on activity created, you notice that we're doing a button handler for the save button. We do the same thing for our photo button. So btn take event photo, just like so. Notice that it recognizes this component from our layout all the way over here to our fragment. Reason being we're using the synthetic imports in Kotlin, which is really nice. Uh, this is the synthetic import here. That means that it can just automatically recognize anything that we put on the corresponding layout. So btn event take photo and then set on click listener. And open curly, close curly to kind of give us like a sort of a lambda style inline function call here. Here's the funny thing. From here, it's ridiculously easy. We simply invoke prep take photo. Now, where did that come from? Well, note where we are. We're in event fragment. Let me control click on prep take photo and note where it takes us. It takes us to that super class diary fragment that we made in our previous video. So this is one of those functions that we refactored up from main fragment to our common super class diary fragment. And now if we want to call it in another fragment that also extends from diary fragment, we can simply invoke it like so. Easy as that. Now what do we do after the user takes the photo? We'll look back in diary fragment and notice there's something here called photo URI, which we also refactored up from main fragment a while ago, but nonetheless, it's a URI, universal resource indicator, which indicates a location of this image on the user's device. And up in the superclass again, when we hear back from the camera, or actually when we invoke the camera because we're using, uh, we're using an implicit intent to invoke the camera, we're giving it this URI and we're saying, hey, I want you to store the image at this location. So all of that work is happening in the superclass from some work we've done in the past. So what we can do now, just one thing to tidy up here, is in this save event function back on event fragment, and just a reminder, that's what gets called when we hit the existing save button. What we can do is we can take this image URI and we can associate it with our event. Now, we do need to make a change to the event data class though, because right now the event data class doesn't know what a photo is. So let's go ahead and add one more parameter to the constructor. And in a Kotlin data class, that's essentially making it a new attribute of this class. So we'll save our, and then we'll call this one local photo URI. Why local photo URI? Well, we're going to end up saving this event to Firebase Cloud Firestore in a moment. And by local photo URI, we mean the URI on the anything like that. Uh, we're going to end up showing this in a recycler view in a later video. So that's why I want to do it like so. Now, because we're saving it in Cloud Firestore, Cloud Firestore can deal with a string a little bit easier than it can a URI. So let's save this as a string. So we'll make it a string, make it a nullable string by adding the question mark. And we'll go ahead and give it a default value of null. The benefit there is anyone who's already calling this constructor to create an event doesn't need to change that call because you notice we're giving this parameter a default value, which means essentially it's optional. Now with that, we save and we go back to our event fragment. And right here where we're creating a new event object, and then we're populating that event object, and then we're adding that event object to our specimen as part of our view model, we simply add a little bit more logic. So we'll say if photo URI, and remember that's the one from our super class. If it does not equal null, then we're going to say event dot local photo URI. Remember that we just created that guy. Local photo URI equals photo URI dot to string. So get the string representation, which is fairly easy to move that string representation back and forth between the URI like so. One more thing that we're going to want to do, and this is something I probably could have done a bit earlier, but now's a really good time to do it, is right now, if I do save a new event, it doesn't actually clear the screen between events. So you see I press save, everything stays there. The risk is we could end up with an old photo URI that we keep associating with new events. So let's make a new function called clear all. Notice I haven't created the function yet. I'm simply calling it, but Android Studio notices that, it puts it in red, and a simple alt enter will fix that for us. So for this, we'll say edt uh, event date dot set text, open and close, just like so. We'll do this for each of them. So uh, act event type dot set text, boom, boom, like so. Act, uh, or sorry, edt quantity dot set text, boom, boom, edt 
description. I think we had a description. Yeah, we do have a description on there. Uh, dot set text. Boom, boom. And finally, we'll say photo URI equals null. So we empty this out for the next go. In other words, we create an event, we save the event, and then we empty everything out so that we can create a brand new event with brand new data. Actually, I realized one more I need to get, which is unit. So ECT unit, and let's say set text there. I probably also need to do a bit of cleanup on the main fragment because I don't think I'm ever emptying out this photo URI after I save the photo there. So I I'll go back, take a look at that, and maybe do a bit of refactoring after this video. But nonetheless, we have what we need to move forward here. Let's go ahead and run and see what we get. The application started, and I'm simply selecting a plant. And now I'm going to use our swipe event to go to the event page. Now we'll say water, quantity one, unit gallon, event date, 3 2020, and we'll say it was thirsty. Now let's take a photo. And you notice, sure enough, that button just with calling that super function calls our camera logic like we put in before. Really easy to do because we're sharing logic across two different fragments. So I simply say yes, that's what I want, and I click to accept it, and then I choose the save button, and let's watch what happens here. We're in our save event, so we create a new event object. Now we use the with block in Kotlin, which essentially means every, everything inside of these curlies is going to be applied to the object inside this variable event. So event.type, event.description, event.quantity, event.units, so on and so forth. So I F8 through it. We get our type, our description, our quantity, all of this we put together in a previous video, and now we get to our photo URI. Oh, look, the photo URI is not null, which is great news. And we see, sure enough, it's pointing us to a place on the phone or on the device where the photo's been stored, and we're now associating that with our event. We associate it with our event, and now let's see if we can get a little tricky here, and I'll show you a little before and after. So we currently have the screen at this state, but notice as soon as I choose F9 to clear all, we go back to our device and you see that the event has now cleared out and it is ready for our next event. So in this video, we've successfully added a button to call logic from a superclass. I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.